Hello, my name is Jay. I'm from the Nelson 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 Museum. This is Portrait of Rembrandt. This piece dates back to the mid-century common era, which is considered to be the greatest period of the Roman Empire. The sculpture is the oldest Roman piece that is a part of the Nelson Atkins collection, and this adds to the value of it. Despite being a precious piece of the collection, very little is known on this piece, and that adds to its ambiguity and even its value, too. We're left with many questions. Who sculpted it? Why was it sculpted? Who was it of? Why do we know very little about this piece? Only speculations can be made through the analyses of the sculpture. The museum seems to believe that the family of the boy commissioned the sculpture after his death. It is also speculated by the museum that he came from a family of great wealth because only aristocratic families could have commissioned such a large, well-sculpted marble piece like this one. This Roman artist captured the realism of adolescence as seen by the soft abdominal muscles and long, awkward, and teenage-like limbs. The mantle that wraps around his shoulders and his hair frame and emphasize his melancholy face that would accurately portray what this teen looked like in real life, his chubbier, soft face and larger head. The Greek influence on this piece can be seen in the contrapposto stature, naturalistic fabric folds in his mantle and naturalistic growth of his hair and real emotion of sadness on his face which points to Hellenistic qualities. The sculpture is smooth and by Greek standards imperfect, the lack of veins and the use of postal support from drapery and attachment to the leg. These things detracted from the realism of the sculpture and belief that the sculpture was an actual person. The eyes lack detail and naturalism, yet the size adds to the melancholy. Looking at this piece from a psychoanalytical perspective, one can look at that melancholy, depressed facial expression and cannot help but wonder if the artist sculpted his face like this for the family and everyone else to remember how or why this teen died. Was he depressed? Upset? Did he take his own life and the portrait for his tomb reflects these features and feelings? Or is his face melancholy because he is sad he did not live a longer life, and for all who visit his tomb, he is grieved to not be there among them, rejoicing in life and celebration? The psychoanalysis could be revered from the artist's perspective. Perhaps he is melancholy and grieved to have had to sculpt a portrait of a young man for his tomb. Could the artist hate the fact that he had to sculpt this portrait and the artist's feelings are re reflected in the portrait and the young man's face? If this is the case, this could be one of the first self-portraits ever done. Perhaps not, but the melancholy face brings an interesting touch to the sculpture nonetheless. This work of art was intended to represent the Roman youth as he actually was. As speculated by the Nelson Atkins Museum, it would have sat in front of his tomb as a sort of death mask. There is no attempt at idealizing this boy or making him more perfect in any way. We see his youth, we see his awkward link limbs, and we see the softness of his skin and chubbiness. This is in stark contrast to classical Greek pieces where the sculptures are highly idealized and unrealistic, as exemplified in Polykletos. Compared to other Roman sculptures during this time period, this piece is more simple and not as elaborate in design or detail as, say, Augustus of Prima Porta, where fabric details and the details in his armor are very intricate. Definitely influenced by classical and Hellenistic Greek sculpture canons shown in the dramatic facial expression and stresses on realism. Because we do not know the artist of this piece, we cannot compare the sculpture to his other works and we cannot truly know who influenced him. The artist, based on how he sculpted this piece, however, could have been influenced by the sculptures of Apoximenos and Hermes and the infant Dionysus because of their closely related attributes to naturalistic representation of the human body. These artists captured youth and what the body looked like. There are no stylizations or idealism. This piece, however, was not intended to represent the ideal youth or anything like that. It was, again, simply to represent what the dead child within the tomb looked like. We look at the quiver at the boy's right foot, and that indicates a connection in reference to the god Apollo. Apollo is often paired with a bow and arrow. This is also worthy of mention because Romans typically sculpted the deceased as deities as an indicator to their move towards immortality. It is also interesting that this piece is at the Nelson Atkins in the first place. It's among intricate and highly detailed or historically relevant sculptures and paintings. At first glance, this is a simple sculpture of a young boy, nothing more. However, there is so much more, and that is why I chose this piece. I figured there had to be more to why this work was so valued by the museum, enough to have it proudly displayed. It really comes down to its simplicity and purpose, especially from that time period. It contradicts the other sculptures found from the second century, and they're so intricate and detailed and commissioned by famous historical figures. This one is just of a boy who died intended to represent reality and emotion and evoke so much more in those who admire and question it.